Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, there's this short clip of the Joe Rogan experience in which Joe talks about his ideas of God and the universe. Joe Rogan said numerous times on his podcast that he's not religious, however he had spiritual experiences with certain substances such as psilocybin mushrooms and DMT. So therefore by default he falls into the category of spiritual but not religious, a person that is more scientifically minded and does not believe in the religious conception of God. Today we're going to react to his statements and examine them from an Islamic standpoint. Guys, before we jump into the video, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I think the universe is God. Okay. That's what I think. Keep going. I think this idea of God creating the universe is silly. I think the whole thing is God. I think it's it's God in the fact that it's the entire creation of everything that exists that we can measure. Mama All Pacha. of it is the universe. Yes. And if you read the Bible, the Pacha. Bible talks about in the beginning there was light. Boy, that sounds a lot like the Big Bang. Boy, that sounds a lot like the birth of the universe. I think these fucking people that wrote the Bible were recounting stories that were told down through people that had a scientific understanding of the birth and death of the universe, just like we do now. Mm. Maybe even more than we do now. And then they got hit by asteroids. And then it was thousands of years before civilization reestablished itself. And the stories had been told down, handed down forever and ever. And by the time people wrote them down, they were goofy. And they were goofy, and it's like God created the earth in six days, and the whole story of Adam and Eve. And there's probably a lot to all of it that's true. So just as I said in the beginning, Joe falls into the category of spiritual but not religious, even though he probably doesn't see himself that way. Because if you make statements such as God is the universe, you are literally spiritual but not religious. This is a terminology that you find quite often in the New Age movement, in people that had experiences with psychedelics, meditation, a little bit of Eastern mysticism sprinkled in, etc. Moreover, his statement that religious texts are somewhat silly, I had to chuckle a little bit because I agree and disagree at the same time, because when it comes down to the biblical understanding of creation in Genesis, yes, he's absolutely right. There we speak about that God created the world in six days and then he rested. However, in the Quran we read, Allah, there is no deity except him, the ever-living, the sustainer of all existence. Neither drowsiness overtakes him, nor sleep. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is before them and what will be after them. And they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. His throne extends over the heavens and the earth, and their preservation tires him not. And he is the most high, the most great. So here you can see a clear distinction between the Quranic perspective and the biblical perspective. The God in the Quran does not need any type of rest. Quite the opposite. He is the sustainer of the universe. Which brings me then to, yet again, silly arguments. I would of course claim that the argument that Joe just made is absolutely silly. Because he says the universe is God. But who created the universe? He says there is no such thing. Everything we see around us is God. But at the same time, you would have to agree, coming from a scientific standpoint, that the universe is finite. 
So is God finite as well? If the universe is God, that means once the universe implodes, there is no God anymore. The universe and everything within it is contingent on something else. You as a human, for example, you are contingent on oxygen, on water, on nourishment, etc., etc., you name it. You have all kinds of needs in order to exist. And so does everything around you be it a human, be it any other animal or any other plant life, the planets, the sun, the stars, everything is contingent, dependent on something else in order to exist. And therefore, if you go back in time, you mentioned the Big Bang, you go back in time and you see what is the reason for me being here? Ah, it's because my parents had sex. Okay, what's the reason for them existing? It's the same cause yet again. So you go back in a causal chain, cause, effect, cause, effect, just in reverse, of course, effect, cause, effect, cause. And then at some point, you will have the first cause. Now, if you say the Big Bang is the first cause, the question is, of course, what created the Big Bang? Within a scientific framework, you have no answer to that whatsoever. Because within the scientific framework, they tell you that something came out of nothing. Atoms, quarks, everything stems out of nothing. This is, of course, an impossibility and a much, much greater miracle than saying there is a creator. But be that as it may, I actually want to quote Terence McKenna on that subject again. Terence McKenna said, science operates under one premise, grant us one miracle, and we explain the rest. The Big Bang coming out of nothing is not a first cause. Nothingness would actually be the first cause within the scientific worldview. You have nothing first. And nothing creates the Big Bang. So nothing is the origin of the universe, of everything you see around you. So needless to state, this of course leads to absurdity. It doesn't make sense whatsoever. So this is why I always refer to Ibn Sina during the golden age of Islam that came up with the theory of the necessary being. If you don't have a necessary being, which is a being that is transcendent of time and space, which creates everything we see, then you would have an infinite regress. Because you say universe equals God. Okay, but universe is finite. Ah, that is true. So it has to start somewhere. Where did it start? Big Bang. Okay, who started the Big Bang? Who created that? Nothing. That doesn't make sense, and this is why scientists nowadays look to other theories, such as simulation theory, for example. They will tell you, yeah, well, there might be somewhat that created this universe. We might be potentially in a simulation, and therefore there must be some sort of programmer, potentially a physicist, that created this universe. Okay, fantastic. If you have a guy that created a virtual simulation, a virtual reality, and this is what this here is, fantastic. Who created that guy? Is that guy in a simulation as well? Okay, fantastic. Who created that simulation? So you have infinite regress yet again. But we already agreed that the universe is finite. And therefore, you cannot have infinite regress. So you need a starting point, which yet again debunks the whole theory of the universe and being God, because God is infinite, of course. So therefore, God cannot be the creation. The creator cannot be the creation. And this is why we read in the Quran, or were they created by nothing? Or are they their own creators? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? In fact, they have no certainty. Or do they possess the treasuries of your Lord? Or are they in control of everything? And this is what is truly amazing to me, because the Quran has been revealed 1,400 years ago, and now, over 1,000 years later, people sit on a podcast and they're discussing the same subjects. All it takes is a little bit of reading in theology, philosophy, to find out that all of those topics that you're discussing nowadays have been discussed already. The Quran addresses them precisely. Have they been created out of nothing? Have they created themselves? This is truly the question that you have to ask yourself. How can something be created out of nothing? That is scientifically impossible. Everybody would agree. Or moreover, did we create ourselves? Of course not, because yet again, we are contingent, dependent upon so many factors just in order to exist. 
We need the air to breathe. We need water. We need sustenance, etc., etc., etc. So if you go back in this causal chain, you need a necessary being that is not contingent upon anything. A necessary being that is self-sufficient, not dependent on any external factors for its existence. But it exists and its existence is necessary for our existence in turn. We are contingent upon that necessary existence, that necessary being. And that necessary being is Allah. Joe, I hereby invite you to Islam. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And as always, may God, the necessary being, bless you all. Much love and peace.